afternoon. Welcome to Meet the Pine Martins. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Stephanie Johnston. I'm the manager of the Martins on the Move project at Vincent Wildlife Trust. And I'm joined here today by my colleague, Lizzie. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm the Senior Carnivore Conservation Officer for Vincent Wildlife Trust. And we're really excited that so many of you can join us today to hopefully learn lots about Pine Martins. Um, we will be having a short um, question and answer section at the end. So if you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat box of um, whichever platform you're watching this on, and we will hopefully be able, be able to answer them later. Thanks, Lizzie. Uh, Lizzie and I have been working in conservation for about 20 years now, and we've worked on a variety of species around the world. But one of the absolute favourites for both of us is pine martens. So maybe after today, pine martens might be one of your favourites too. All right, well, we'll get started and let's go meet the pine martens. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Um, so yeah, let's kick off by uh, talking about what is a pine martin. So there's a lot of confusion about what pine martins are. Um, some people often confuse them with birds like house martins or sand martins, and they're not birds. Um, they're also not trees, even though they have the name pine in their uh, name. Um, so they're actually a native mammal, and they are one of our um, members of the weasel family that we have. So they're related to um, some other animals that you might be more familiar with, like weasels, stoats, otters, badgers, um, polecats and ferrets. And pine martins are about the size of a small cat. They're a bit slimmer than a cat. And they live in woodlands and they're really, really well adapted to living in woodlands. And um, so they're really excellent climbers. Um, they can really easily climb up and down trees and they can jump between different trees and run along fallen branches and really make the most of all the structure that we have within woodlands. And they uh, make their homes, which are called dens or den sites, um, in structures within the woodland. So um, they will rest and sleep in things like uh, holes in trees or cavities in trees, old squirrel drays, old bird's nests, um, rocky cairns or rocky boulders. They'll also sometimes go into the roofs of buildings as well. So what do pine martins eat? Well, they have uh, what we refer to as an omnivorous diet. So they're omnivores, which means they eat meat and plants. Um, so they have a, a very um, healthy, balanced diet. So they eat um, primarily small mammals. So animals like voles and mice, also squirrels. And they also have a really sweet tooth. So they, they're really fond of fruit. Um, and especially in late summer and autumn, they eat fruit like um, rowan berries, bilberries, blackberries, raspberries. And they also eat some of our common birds. So particularly things like pigeons and magpies and their eggs. Um, and they'll also eat insects as well. So they have a really, really varied, balanced diet. Um, so what about how pine martins live? Well, they're solitary, which means they live on their own most of the time, apart from when they're breeding. So pine martins come together to mate in the summer months. And then the females will give birth to um, their babies, which are called kits. So pine martin babies are called kits um, in March and April. And they can have up to five kits, but it's more typical for them to have just two or three. Um, and one cool fact about pine martins is they have this really beautiful um, yellow, creamy, orangey um, pattern on their chest, which we call a bib. And on this bib, they have um, really unique patterns. So that might be spots or splodges or dashes or lines. And these bib patterns are um, unique to individual pine martins. So we can use them to um, distinguish between different pine martins and tell different pine martins apart, which is really helpful because um, otherwise they look much the same and it's quite hard to tell them apart. So these um, unique bib patterns are kind of like 
um, fingerprints on humans and how that can be used to tell different people apart. So Pine Martins used to be really common and uh, found pretty much all over Britain. And um, in fact, until the 1800s, they were our second most common carnivore in Britain. Um, our most common carnivore was the weasel. So they used to be found pretty much all over Britain, um, also all over Ireland and much of the rest of um, continental Europe as well. And it was estimated that around 6,000 years ago, um, pine martins, um, there were perhaps about 147,000 pine martins in Britain at that time. However, by the early 1900s, pine martins had disappeared from really large areas of Britain and Ireland. And their only real stronghold, the area where they were doing well, was in the north of Scotland, and they were also still found in parts of the north of England, like the Lake District and also parts of North Wales. Um, but at this time, it was estimated that the number of pine martins had shrunk to about 1,500 animals. So we went from about 147,000 animals 6,000 years ago to only 1,500 animals um, around 1,900. So why did this happen? Well, as I mentioned, pine martins are a woodland animal. So Britain used to be blanketed in woodland from the north to the south. So these were really good conditions for an animal such as a pine martin that really thrived when Britain was covered in woodland. However, we've cleared much of our woodland for either farming um, or industry. So we've lost so much of our woodland and in fact, by 1900, woodland cover was down to only about 5% of the country. So this was really bad news for an animal like the pine martin that, um, you know, uses woodlands a lot. And a second issue that um, reduced the number of pine martins was that pine martins were killed in really high numbers, particularly during the 1800s. Um, a lot of this was because um, there was a rise in the number of people um, shoot, rearing and shooting birds like pheasants and partridge and grouse um, as an activity. And pine martins and some of our other predatory animals were um, trapped and killed in order to protect the birds like the pheasants and the grouse because pine martins um, are sometimes seen as a threat to those birds. So a combination of um, losing their woodland habitat and um, being killed in high numbers uh, meant that pine martins um, disappeared from big parts of Britain and their numbers really reduced. So how have we been helping pine martins to increase and become more widespread in Britain? Well, one thing that helped pine martins was um, a slow increase in woodland cover. So we now have more woodland um, in some parts of the country. We definitely don't have as much as we, as we used to have thousands of years ago, but it is slowly increasing as more trees are being planted. And there's also been um, a reduction in the number of people um, game shooting and also the um, associated trapping and killing of pine martins with that. And actually, since the 1980s, pine martins have been legally protected. So since that time, it's now illegal to intentionally kill or hurt or disturb a pine martin. So that protection has really helped the number of pine martins to start to increase again. However, um, up until very recently, pine martins still were very rare in England and Wales and were actually in danger of becoming extinct in these countries. So the Vincent Wildlife Trust um, wanted to try to help pine martins to return to parts of England and Wales where they've been missing for a long time. So in order to do that, we started to research where pine martins could be brought back to. And we know that pine martins need a few things to survive well. Um, so one of these things is large areas of woodlands that they need for shelter and for finding food. Um, another thing pine martins need ideally is to be away from busy roads where they might um, end up being run over. And also pine martins need areas where people are going to be really welcoming and support them being there. So having support from, especially from people who are working the land. So farmers and landowners and land managers um, is also really helpful to have a, a kind of thriving pine martin population. 
So Vincent Wildlife Trust started looking into areas um, that fulfilled these criteria. And um, this was called a feasibility study. So we were looking at the feasibility of returning pine martins to these areas. And after years of work and research, um, we settled on an area of Wales that was suitable um, to have pine martins returned. Um, so this area is in central Wales. It has really nice, big areas of connected woodland. There's really low density of roads. And there was really good support from the local communities who were um, welcoming pine martins back. So what we did was between 2015 and 2017, we captured 51 pine martins from the north of Scotland where they were doing well and we drove them down um, to Wales and released them in this area that we had selected and this is called a translocation so it means we translocated the pine martins from Scotland to Wales and then latterly a second translocation took place um, to the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire on the Gloucestershire Welsh border and that took place between 2019 and 2021 and again we took animals from the north of Scotland uh, we took 35 pine martins for that project and they were released into the Forest of Dean. So the way we did this was we um, selected specific forests in Scotland and we used um, humane traps to capture the pine martins. We had a vet working with us and all of the pine martins we caught were given a full health check to make sure that they were healthy enough to be moved from Scotland to Wales. Um, when that was done, they were driven down to Wales um, in a specially adapted animal van. And then they were placed in these enclosures that you can see in this video here. Um, so these are called release pens. Um, so these were just temporary enclosures that the pine martins were put into. Um, as you can see, they kind of mimic the natural environment that pine martins live in. So they were kind of furnished with um, like logs and um, natural vegetation. The pine martins were fed every day and we were able to monitor them with these remote cameras to produce the videos like you're seeing here. Um, and this really just gave the pine martins a chance to get used to um, and acclimatise to their new environment. And then after a few days, um, we let the pine martins go. So we just opened the release pen and they were able to go out and explore their new home, their new environment. So because of these um, translocations to Wales and also to the Forest of Dean um, and the conservation efforts that we've done, pine martins are now doing really well in Wales, also in Gloucestershire and further afield as well. So they're um, starting to spread out really well in Wales, also in kind of Gloucestershire, Herefordshire, Shropshire. Um, in Scotland, the population is very robust and we've got animals moving from the south of Scotland into the north of England um, and into Northumberland and Cumbria, as you can see on this map here. So I'm now going to hand over to Stephanie to talk a bit more about what we are, what work we're doing now to continue these conservation efforts. Thanks, Lizzie. So as Lizzie mentioned earlier, pine martins like us just need a place to call home. They want somewhere warm, they want somewhere dry, somewhere cosy they can rest up at night, somewhere they can spend the winter and hunker down, somewhere that they can have their babies and raise their young. And very importantly for a pine mutt, they like to have somewhere elevated and safe to keep them away from other predators, particularly say foxes that might harm themselves or their babies. Now the place that pine muttons love best is a large natural tree cavity. So tree cavities large enough to house the pine martin are quite rare in the UK because as Lizzie said, we've lost a lot of our forests. They were, they were chopped down. Now, since the Second World War, we have been planting our new forests, but even the oldest of those still only have trees that are about 70 years of age. And trees really need to be about 100 years of age before they start to develop these tree cavities large enough for a pine martin to call home. So about 20 years ago, some folks that work for the VWT decided to design a den box 
a home just for pine martens. So they created a large box. It has an internal chamber that keeps the animals really warm and dry and cozy. And it has two chimneys on it, so two entry and exit points. So it's a bit like having a front door and a back door. And the pine martens love them. So they were first installed in Scotland in 2023 and very quickly the pine martens in the forest there took up residence. They were using them for overwintering and they were using them for their ra for raising their babies every year. Now the Vincent Wildlife Trust and others have since installed gem boxes like this in mid Wales where those pine martens were re re released that Lizzie mentioned earlier. And there's also gem boxes like this over near the Forest of Dean and Gloucestershire area as well. And there's other projects right across the UK that are now starting to get den boxes built and get them into their local woodlands so that when pine martens arrive in a new area, they're going to have a home ready and waiting for them, a penthouse apartment just for them set up and ready and waiting in the woodland. So these new areas, um, we're going to hopefully find more and more. So as pine martens move in, they'll be ready to go. Now, den boxes not only provide a home for pine martens, they actually also provide a really useful focus point for us to monitor the pine martens. So if we set up a trail camera onto a den box, we can find out when a pine marten makes it its home and importantly, when a mum decides to use it for having her kits. So this gives us a lot of information about how pine martens are moving into new areas and how well they're doing establishing new breeding populations. Now, of course, um, we're trained in doing this and you have to be careful not to disturb the animal. So if installing a den box and monitoring it is something that you would be interested in doing, be sure to get in touch with the Vincent Wildlife Trust to find out um, the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts. Now, trail cameras have actually been a real revolution for ecologists. In the past, we really just had to look for scats, uh, which is the poos that pine martens and other animals leave behind, or we can look for tracks in the mud and the snow. And all of this is things that we still do. But for animals like the pine martens, which are really shy and elusive animals and quite scarce and thin on the ground, um, this has been a really, really valuable tool. So we're getting records from places that we just wouldn't be seeing the field signs. Now, the cost of trail cameras is actually coming down and it's something that people can now start to purchase themselves. You'll see in this video here um, that a member of the public has taken actually and just sent in to us and it shows a mum and two kits at a place in Dumfries and Galloway and he was out just local in his local woodland monitoring this um, feeder box and he discovered a mother pine martin with two kits and this was the first record that we had of pine martins breeding in this new area. These two kits are actually about five months old. Um, and as you can see, they're still learning the ins and outs of climbing trees. Now, not only is it important for pine martens to have homes when they reach the woods, pine martens actually need large areas of woodland. So as Lizzie said, one of the key things that they were looking for when they were looking to relocate pine martens to Wales was areas where they had large amounts of forests. Because a pine martens home range can be anything from one square kilometre all the way up to 30 square kilometres. Pine martens tend to live at really low densities for a carnival compared to, say, the likes of a badger or a fox. So they need to make sure that they have enough land where they can get all the food that they need and find all the all the shelter that they require. So to help manage pine martens and, and conserve them right across the UK, we need to be working at the landscape scale. We don't just work in a little woodland, we work right across valleys, right across counties. In fact, the project that Lizzie and I are currently working on, we're working across 10 different counties because pine martens need a lot of space. So we work with a lot of different partners and there's lots of initiatives and organisations and government departments out there that are now planting forests. And this is going to help not only pine martens who, who rely on forests, but other species such as red squirrels um, and, and other forest dependent species that require these large areas as well. And of course, it's really important that we connect up the bits of woodland that we have. So if a pine martin is in a bit of woodland, it wants to go find its friends. So it's going to need to move through the landscape. And the more areas of connecting forest that we can have, the safer it is for these animals to move around and go and see their friends and family. 
Now, not only is it important to have large areas of forest, what we really need is diverse forests as well. So as Lizzie mentioned earlier, our pine martens love eating a wide range of things. They like their fruits, their nuts, their small mammals and their birds. And to make this uh, possible for pine martens, it means that everything else needs to be doing well in that ecosystem. So it's really important that we plant a real diverse range of, of plants um, and trees. So Lizzie and I, of course, have been busy working um, to conserve pine muns for quite a while now, but you also can do something for your local wildlife. It might be pine muns you're interested in. It might be butterflies. It might be bees. There's always something that you can find. You can find things in your own back garden. You can find things in your local park, in your local woodland. And when you see a wildlife, you should record that sighting, record the details of that sighting, and let one of the many conservation organisations across the UK know, because they really all need to know where all of the animals that they're looking to conserve are so that they can make the best decisions for helping to conserve them. Now, as you're learning more, you can learn through books and online resources. You should share your knowledge with other people so that everybody can get enthusiastic about wildlife conservation. You might be able to get involved in a local habitat restoration project, something that's improving the habitat for wildlife. That might just be a flower border in your local park that is going to help the butterflies and the bees. Or it might be a big project where people are planting trees right across landscapes that will help lots and lots of different animals as well but you can become a wildlife detective. You might have a trail camera, or you might just be out in your back garden looking for a dropping that a hedgehog has left behind or looking for a print in the mud. You can be a wildlife detective too. But of course, if you find any evidence of a pine man, please do get in touch with us at Vincent Wildlife Trust. Okay, great. Hopefully you all found that um, interesting. So we've got some questions coming through on the chat. So we'll just start to work through those. Um, if you have um, any more questions now the talk has finished, please feel free to pop them in the chat as well. Um, so Rebecca has asked if there are any pine martins in Cornwall. Um, interestingly, over the last couple of years, there have been um, a couple of videos taken on trail cameras of pine martins in Cornwall. And this is a bit puzzling because Cornwall isn't an area that has an established pine martin population that we know of. And um, the nearest um, known populations are in Gloucestershire and Hampshire. So it, it's likely that the animals that have been seen in Cornwall um, it probably constitutes just a couple of individuals, perhaps that have been um, kind of covertly, secretly released there um, or possibly escaped from um, private collections. Um, we have a question from Martin. Um, have there been any further sightings of the Pine Martin, which was camera trapped in Grisdale Forest, Cumbria? Um, Stephanie, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, sure. Um, there haven't been any more records on the trail camera, but unfortunately, within a couple of months of that sighting, there was a pine martin found dead on the road. So whether or not that was the same pine martin or a different pine martin, we can't be sure, but it was roughly in the same area. Um, there are not very many other records of pine martins in Cumbria at this point. There was a lady who thought that she saw one in her garden and that was a possible sighting, but we weren't able to confirm that with a trail camera uh, image or anything like that. And there is a small number of records of pine martens in the far northeast of Cumbria as well. But so far, pine martens haven't quite moved into this area, but there is a project um, going on there at the minute to monitor pine martens at a broader scale. OK, thanks. Um, yeah. And someone has asked, wasn't there trail cam footage on, from near London of a pine martin? Um, yes, there was. Um, sometime last year and that was also um kind of a really odd record because it was in um in yeah part of london and pine martins aren't typically found in um like really urbanized areas so um again it's not really known where that animal came from it, it again it's like quite far from any known populations so um so probably um it was one that had been secretly released um or possibly had escaped from a, a private collection um, Stephanie is a question for you. So um, Andrea has asked, is there any way to adopt a pine martin? 
Oh, that's such a good idea. There isn't at the moment, um, but an adopt a Pine Martin scheme might be something that we should kick off to raise money for Pine Martin conservation right across Australia. Uh, Australia, the UK. Um, hopefully there'll be lots of people that will be interested in doing that and uh, we can sign Andrea up first. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, someone has asked, are Pine Martins only found in the UK? Which is a really good question. Um, no, actually Pine Martins are found throughout most of Europe. So they're found right the way from um, Britain and Ireland and Portugal, all the way across to Russia um, and right down into kind of the southern countries like um, Spain and Italy. Um, there is also another type of martin in Europe that we don't have in Britain, but that we have on the continent. Um, so that's called the stone martin or the beech martin. So in parts of continental Europe, there are these two martin species, the pine martin and the stone or beech martin. Um, the stone or beech martin has um, slightly different ecology like it it um kind of slightly different habitat preferences um stephanie someone has asked where could they go to see a pine martin oh that's a good question um so pine martins are very cryptic animals they primarily come out at night so it would be very difficult to see a pine martin you might be lucky enough to stumble across one uh, particularly if you live in the north of scotland but one of the best places in the UK to go and see a pine mutt would be up in the north of Scotland where they are doing the best. There's um, guest houses and bed and breakfasts that are actually um, having pine martins visit their gardens on a regular basis, usually because they're putting out food and the pine martins are coming um, nightly to, to take part in that. And of course, you can go there and see these and have a holiday and see a pine martin. There's some other uh, companies up there that have wildlife hides. Now, of course, with watching all wildlife, especially, you know, cryptic and shy animals, uh, you need to be quiet and you need to be patient. Um, and with pine mountains, you often need to go out at night as well. But certainly if you did an internet search for uh, sea pine mountains, North Scotland, I think you'll find some accommodation that can help you there. Yeah, definitely. Um, someone has asked, are there areas on the fringes of um, the Pine Martins core strongholds where you're looking for potential den box and trail cams to monitor or support their spread? Do you want to answer that one as well, Stephanie? That's an excellent question. That is exactly what we are looking for at the moment. So we're working on a new project called Martins on the Move. It's funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And one of the key things that we're trying to do is work on those core areas where the pine martins have been re uh, introduced or re-released in Mid Wales and uh, the south of Scotland and in Gloucestershire and then help those pine martin populations spread out by installing den boxes and areas in um, neighbouring uh, Wood, woodland and also working with landowners and the communities in general so that we can help these pine mountain populations naturally spread out so if you are anywhere near a pine mountain population uh installing a den box is definitely something that you can do to help these populations expand yeah and uh following on nicely from that someone has asked where could they get a pine martin den box from if they wanted to put one up Ah, yes. So the Vincent Wildlife Trust have plans for the VWT Den Box on our website. So if you're handy with woodwork, you could go there and try building one yourself. Uh, but if you'd like to just buy one uh, ready made, there's a company called Wildlife Boxes. I think it's wildlifeboxes.co.uk. And they um, sell really good quality VWT Den Boxes and Pine Martin Den Boxes on there. Now, of course, you need to think, where am I going to put this den box? You need to find a suitable tree. And if you needed any advice on that, then you could get in touch with Vincent Wildlife Trust and, and we could uh, give you some further information about installing den boxes. Yeah. Um, and we've got a question from Hugh, um, who we know. Hi, Hugh, um, who monitors um, a site on behalf of VWT, but can't currently get there due to snowy conditions um, and is asking, will the Pine Martin return to the baited site even um, after three or four weeks of nothing offered? Um, I, like I found that Pine Martins are a kind of eternal optimists. So, yeah, I think they will continue to go back to a site for quite a long time um, to find food if they've previously found food there. So, yeah, I think it's absolutely fine to definitely wait until the snow thaws. Um, and, and I think the Pine Martin will come back and when you're able to, to make it back there. 
Um, Stephanie, uh, we have a question about, um, uh, so it's kind of about grey squirrels, but then also um, someone is worried about the risk of pine martins to barn owl chicks and ground nesting birds. Would you like to say something about that? Yes. Um, so, of course, birds are on the menu for a pine martin. So that's a natural part of the diet. Um, but pine martins, as I mentioned, live at really quite low densities. So they do far less uh, damage or have far less impact on, on our birds than, say, for example, domestic cats um, and that kind of thing. So in general, what we need to do is have diverse woodlands so that there's lots of different things for our pine martens to feed on. Also, if you've got like a barn owl nest box or, or a different kind of nest box, there's other ways to protect them from pine martens as well. So you can put barriers on there so that pine martens can't actually get into the birds. But again, um, certainly get in touch if you want some more information about ways to prevent um, pine martens getting into barn owl boxes and nest boxes as well. Um, okay, we have a, just a couple more before we finish. Um, so someone is asking if we can recommend um, a good book about pine martens. Yes, I have a good book. I actually always have it on my desk if I don't knock everything over here. It's literally called Pine Martins. It's by uh, Johnny Burks. And if you do an internet search for that, you'll probably find it. And there's lots of really good information in there. Yeah, definitely. Good read. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is another one for you. Sorry, Stephanie. Um, someone is asking, can they check a pine martin den box if they put one up near me? So what are the rules around checking den boxes? So the rules are you can monitor a pine martin den box carefully from a distance of five meters or greater. You can't go and check a den box or disturb a den box in any way unless you have a specific license from the Nature Conservation Organization in your country. Um, so you can, but there's a lot of uh, ways that you need to minimize disturbance and good times of year and bad times of year to do that. So again, please get in touch with us at Vincent Wildlife Trust uh, and we can give some further information on that. Because if you're in an area where you have pine mountains and you can put a den box up and you can monitor them, that would be absolutely brilliant because that information is invaluable to us. But it's a really good idea um, to get in touch so we can give you more advice. Thank you. Um, I think we've just got one or two more to finish on. Um, someone is asking, is there any way we can help with fundraising for VWT and Pine Martins? Um, which is a great question. Um, yeah, so if you want to support Vincent Wildlife Trust work, um, there is a donate option on our website. So if you just go to vwt.org.uk, there'll be a link coming up shortly. Um, there's an option to um, donate to our work there and that would be really appreciated. And maybe we'll finish on this final question, which is for both of us, Stephanie. Um, what is your favorite thing about Pine Martins? Oh, that's such a hard question. There's so many things I love about Pine Martins. I think it is probably their inquisitive nature. Whenever I uh, see trail camera footage of them, they always just look like they're so interested in the world around them. They're clearly really clever animals. Yeah, I think, um, I love the way they move and their exceptional kind of climbing abilities. And like when you see, like you say, videos of them um, sort of running up and down trees or jumping between trees, like they're clearly so well adapted to the kind of woodland environment. And um, yeah, I, I always think that's really cool to watch. Um, so yeah, I think we'll we'll wrap things up there. Um, if you stay on the stream for another minute or so, and um, there's going to be some links coming up um, to material on our website if you want to find out more about Pine Martins. Um, if you have any questions that you wanted to ask but didn't have time, you can contact us through our website. Um, please also follow us on all of the social media platforms if you don't already, where we provide updates on our Pine Martin work. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining us and hopefully see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.